Hey, future respiratory therapist. I got a message for you today. I just, I'm just going to be real honest with you. I'm not really going to teach you anything. I just want to talk to you here for a little bit, okay? I just got off a session with my graduating class. And of course, everybody's doing virtual learning right now. So of course, that's what we're doing also. And at the end of that session, it just kind of dawned on me that I only have a couple of talks left with these guys. Maybe one, maybe two. And I realized that many of you are in the same boat. I realized that many of you are so close to graduation. Just one, two, three weeks down the road, you're going to be done with your educational experience. And I'm so excited for you. And I just want to tell you congratulations. Okay. But I also want to share something with you that dawned on me today. I was so proud of my students because they are performing so well. They are critically thinking about every scenario that I give them, okay? They are, are, are digging in deeper than the surface level. And it just makes me excited to see that because it shows me that they've learned what we've been teaching over the last several semesters. Now, the reason I'm doing this video now is because I want to share a message with you. Here's what's going to happen. You see, at the end of that conversation, at the end of that virtual session, I'm just going to be real honest with you guys. I got a little emotional with my students and I just, I just cut it off real fast. I just said, okay, that's all I got guys. Bye. Cause I didn't want them to see me cry. That's the truth. Okay. Um, but, but the truth is, is that I know what's coming. I know what's coming for all of you graduates in the next couple of weeks. I know what's about to happen. And I just want to tell you not to let it happen. Okay. So let me prophesize for you here real quick. What's about to happen. You're going to take your board exams. You're going to pass your board exams. Good. Congratulations. You're going to get your state licensure, which means you're going to be able to practice in the state that which you want to practice in. Phenomenal. I'm so happy for you. You're going to get a job at a facility that you're so excited about. And then you're going to start your orientation process. And somewhere within your orientation process, somebody is going to say to you, probably your preceptor is going to say to you, you're really smart and you know what you're doing. You're going to be a really good respiratory therapist, but you need to work on one thing. And that one thing is time management. Now, when they say that, here's what I want you to understand. And this is what makes me sad. When they say time management, they're telling you, you need to work faster and harder. They're telling you, you need to cut corners. They're telling you to get as many treatments done as fast as you can, even if that means stacking multiple therapies at a time, even though when you know that that is not correct. But that's what time management means to the respiratory therapy preceptor. Okay, that's the expectations that are going to be put onto you. Now, what I want to do here real quick and what's written on the board here are several terms. And this list goes on and on and on. This is not the end of the term. This is not the end of the list. It's just the fastest list I can put together. Okay. I want to point something out here to you. Okay. Column one, which you can't see right now because I'm obstructing is what respiratory therapy is not. Okay. Let me illustrate. Albuterol treatments for anybody who is short of breath, no matter if it's suggestive heart failure or asthma or whatever, we are not albuterol monkeys. Okay. Nasal cannula, low levels of oxygen. We do not exist to provide that. Do we? Of course. But is that our number one focus? 100% not. Oxygen cylinders. Do we exist to make sure everybody has an oxygen cylinder when they go on transport? Of course not. We do it, but that is not who we are anymore. There was a time when we were oxygen, oxygen jockeys. Okay, we ran around providing cylinders for everybody, but we are not that anymore in 2020. Vent checks. 
Now, when I say event checks, I'm talking about writing down numbers and documenting numbers into a system that your vent is already communicating with. That is not what we are. We are not vent check documenters. We are not ventilator, mechanical ventilation documenters. We are mechanical ventilator managers. We are mechanical ventilator artists, mechanical ventilator leaders. We're not documenters. We're just not here just to roll through and document the numbers when you can walk in the room and get them yourself. That's not what we do. And then the last thing here is treatments, any type of treatments. We're not treatment junkies. We're not, we're not here just to throw in as many treatments as we can, as fast as we can, so we can get done as fast as we can, so we can go to breakfast and lunch and hang out with the boys and the girls and gossip. It's not who we are, okay? So who are we? What are respiratory therapists? Let me tell you what makes a respiratory therapist a respiratory therapist. Somebody who knows the difference between alveolar oxygen and arterial oxygen. Somebody who can assess the difference in arterial oxygenation and venous oxygenation. Somebody who can document and note and recognize when our mechanically ventilated patients are short of breath mentally and neurally because we're assessing the P100 or the occlusion pressure. Static compliance, airway resistance. Why are our peak pressures 40 centimeters of water pressure? Is it because of an alveolar problem? Or is it because of an airway resistance problem? Respiratory therapist is somebody who knows the difference in external respiration versus internal respiration. Knowing that these formulas up here tell me about external respiration. But this formula here, this one, this formula tells me about internal respiration. This formula tells me that this formula may be fantastic, but our, our tissues may still be hypoxic. And respiratory therapists tell you that, okay? Our FEV1%, respiratory therapists can tell you what the difference in a obstructive or a restrictive lung disease is and how we find it on a PFT. Mean airway pressure, we can tell you how to, how to recruit and re-recruit alveoli to enhance oxygenation through mean airway pressure. It, through mean airway pressure. We can talk to you about oxygen index and PF ratio and the difference between the two. Knowing that oxygen index brings into the formula mean airway pressure where PF ratio does not. So don't talk to me about PF ratio if we're using a mean airway pressure of 26 centimeters of water pressure to achieve that PF ratio. There's a different story there, right? We understand the use, the bedside value of an entitled CO2 monitor. We can use an entitled CO2 monitor to tell us when our patient is going south, when our patient is, 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 in, is, is developing an increased dead space, maybe a pulmonary embolism. Maybe the patient is losing blood pressure rapidly and we know that results in increased dead space. We know that excessive PEEP, if you'll let us find optimal PEEP, we can tell you where the PEEP is excessive and where it's not based off of our arterial to end tidal CO2 gradient as well as our arterial to venous oxygenation difference. We know that stuff as well as our static compliance. We know it. And when we're using an entitled CO2 monitor, we know what our VD to VT ratio is. We know how much of that minute ventilation is actually participating in gas exchange at the alveolar level. Not just what the minute ventilation is. It doesn't matter. We can tell you what's happening at the alveolar level. We can tell you what alveolar tidal volume is with this number right here. This is what respiratory therapists are. And I'm going to tell you something. You've gone through school and you've spent your entire school learning how to be a theory-based respiratory therapist. You with me? What's going to happen is you're going to go through orientation and they're going to immediately reprogram you and start teaching you how to be a real-world respiratory therapist. Now let me tell you the difference between 
a theory-based respiratory therapist and a real-world-based respiratory therapist. It's real simple, guys. The real-world respiratory therapist is simply a theory-based respiratory therapist with the corners cut off of it. You start cutting corners and you start forgetting all of this and you just start doing this, then welcome to the world of real world respiratory therapy. Best wishes.